another YouTuber made a screwdriver out of some large rebar and suggested that uh, you could make a gun barrel out of some. So I went and got some large rebar. I think you know what I'm going to do with it. This must be, I don't know, 7 eighths, 1 inch, something like that. So yeah, got some uh, 22 liner here, left over from a previous project. It's about 18 inches of this rebar. Let's get to it. This carbide is just about spent. Five sixteenths. This is the drill for this for the uh, liner. And in case you're wondering if these installer drills are made for metal like this, no, they are not. These are basically made for wood and drywall. <coughs> so we're probably going to burn out this bit and go through another one. That's half the fun. Tell you what, I'm going to drill this. You don't have to watch. I'll be back. Well, status update. Um, I've drilled about uh, 10 inches deep. I got the long bit on here. Just a crappy installer bit. Let me show you. It's about 10 inches in. And it's starting to get a little tight on the withdraw. So I believe it's probably wandering quite a bit. So it's not going to be very centered on the other side. But uh, it's proof of concept. Anyway. About 10 inches in. I'll take it another inch and then we'll flip the piece over and come at it from the other side. Be helpful. That is very hot. Oh man, that's hot. Yeah, right in the middle where it's being drilled, it's really hot. This end is warm but not hot. Right there is burning hot. Ow. And then the end is cool to the touch. So, uh, yeah. A little prograde work we're doing here. All right. It's <laughs> great. Let's see if we can get this anything near centered. Let's see what that looks like. Mwah. No worse than the other side. Let's see if we can uh, face it off when it's sticking out six inches. This is a bad idea. Good enough for this job. Okay, we're all the way through the piece of rebar. 18 inches long. Reasonably centered hole, too. Alright, today is tomorrow. We've got the stock here, the barrel drilled out all the way through, ready for the liner. I'm going to put it on this gun because making barrels for this gun is super easy. Now, part of this, uh, part of this rebar uh, it has every other and it has some numbers in there and I thought maybe we could include that for character, something like that, but uh, on second thought, I think I'm just going to go like that because it's less work for me on the other side if I uh, only have three things to file off instead of six. So yeah, it's going to look something like that. Kind of ugly. Nice junkyard look. Hopefully I can get that to mesh up. I'm not sure. We'll have to size the... Uh, there's a block underneath that actually uh, engages the barrel on the pivot as well as the release catch to open it. I'll have to make that the right height so that it hits the rim of the 22 so it may be a little high like this and I may have to you know grind it flush back here so it may look a little goofy well it's definitely going to look a little goofy that's kind of the point
thumbs are tired. I'm gonna see if I can chuck this into the vise, cut it normally. Yep, there it is. Perfect. A lot of sanding, a little bit of filing. There's our, there's our block right there. That's a uh, three eighths with a little bit of wiggle. Sanded the edges so that they fit perfectly. Nice tight fit. We had to redo that angle so that it was just right. Push it down. Clicks into place with the release lever. Perfect. Got the uh, drilled barrel chucked in the vise. We're just gonna mill a little flat on the bottom of it where we will weld it onto the block that we just machined. This is just gonna be rough, obviously. It's just haphazardly clamped in there with some wood. get that on the other side so you can see it how about that the width of that cut could be a little uh, a little wider so we're gonna go a little deeper I know I said I'd show it to you but I, there's not room to do that unless I raise the cutting tool and I don't want to do that because I don't have a z-axis DRO or accurate way see that so I'm just gonna put the block on here and say that would probably work give me some room for some good steel fillet in there it's not too close to the liner yet but I'm gonna go ahead and take one more cut <sighs> all right we have a very nice flat on the barrel now don't know if you can see that Let's see if we can get that in focus. Nope. Anyway, it's a nice flat on the barrel. I'm gonna go try it out. Be right back. Alrighty, it's getting to the point where once I put this block into the action of the gun, I can't get it out again. So we're gonna drill a little hole and tap a 632 screw in it. I love spiral point taps. I use them whenever possible. Even in blind holes. Because they're awesome. Although I should have lubed this one because I can't back it out now. <laughs> here, we'll put a little lube in there. 
There we go. So, let's see if you can see that. Now this goes in here like that. Goes down, locks in the action, and we can pull it out with a 632 screw. Okay, bueno. I'm going to turn this piece of aluminum down to 5 16 which will let me stick it in where the barrel liner is going to go and test the hammer drop so that I can drop the hammer, <coughs> excuse me, drop the hammer and get it positioned just right. Okay. We're headed to 5 16 This is. 0.365 right now, so we can go ahead and take it down quite a bit. Take off uh, 50 thousandths more. Disengage the feed. All right, that's it. That's uh, 310, which should be a nice loose fit in the uh, in the thing. <laughs> in the hole where the barrel liner goes. Okay, so what we're going to set up, we're going to take the barrel, gonna put a piece of steel in the barrel, in the breech here, and a piece of aluminum that I've cut to size goes behind that. The steel is just for some mass. We're going to put this on top of the block where it's going to go. So we're sort of approximating how it would go if we welded it right now. And then I'm thinking we ought to be able to dry fire and hopefully not hit the steel. There we are. I don't know if you can see that, but it says we're just barely off center, which is actually probably close enough for 22, but we're going to tune it up and get it just right. It's looking pretty awful, but it's going to work. So I've had to take this down a bit so that it fits in the gun, you know, so that it fits in the in the breech there, uh, just with a milling cutter. This is nice and flat still. It's got a bevel on the edge, which I can fill on the TIG welder, which is nice. Get a little strength. Well, I'm not really worried about strength. It's just 22. And then this, let's see if you can see this. Let me focus a little bit. There we go. There's our test uh, block. And the very last test is this one right up here by the edge, right where it belongs. So it's pretty perfect. Anyway, off to the TIG welder. Alrighty, we're all clamped in. Ready to weld this puppy. We're going to tack it probably on this back side here. Alright, we got our tack there. We're going to go put it in the gun and make sure everything lines up and then we'll weld it for real. So, that's what the little tack weld we just made. Here's the receiver. That kind of hooks on here. Let's see. Uh. Oh yeah, perfect fit. First time. All right. Let's go TIG weld it for real. Yeah, that's pretty ugly weld. I'll probably mill that off. You know, to make it look not so crappy. All set. I uh, milled those welds down because I'm a crappy uh, welder. Good fit. Locks tightly. Yeah, worked out. Now I just got to put a barrel in it. Broken drill bit is now a very tiny boring bar.
pretty good fit. Cartridge rests just higher than the rest of the breech here. So it should be a nice fit. Go try it out. Twenty-two. Whee! Good strike. 